Hey everybody, it's Mike DeShazer here in Seoul, South Korea at ProofSuite, and today we're going to talk about gas tokens and how to lower transaction costs when you're performing trades on the Ethereum blockchain, flash loans, interest rate swaps, and other transactions that we've covered in previous lessons. We're going to talk about how to capture gas when it's cheaper, and then how to deploy it when it's more expensive to actually save money. This is due to neat rules inside of the core Ethereum mainnet blockchain, and we're going to talk about the rebating system as well as marketplaces where these tokens are actually transferable and tradable, allowing us to spend less money than others who might be trying to perform the same transaction or maybe even try to front run us, get our transaction through on the blockchain quicker because we're setting a higher gas price, but we're getting the rebate. We're saving up to half the price that it otherwise might cost. So let's sit down and take a look. All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to save money on transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, let's start here and look at this transaction. Here I have a simple approval, just a function that I'm calling on a smart contract, and I paid 34 cents for that, or 0.00137 F, and then that was 30 minutes ago, and then just right after that, I spent only using the same gas price, I spent only 19 cents, so about half the price, and I call it the same exact function on the same smart contract. So how did I save almost half on the Ethereum gas? So you might assume that I just set a lower gas price, but if you look at both of these transactions, this is 30.03, this is 30.03, and over here, this transaction, the gas price is set to 30.03. So I'm paying the same amount of gas. The difference is that I'm getting rebates, and that's because of a thing called gas token. Now, this isn't some ICO. If you go to the bottom of the page that talks about gas token, uh, they, they make it very clear that you know there's no ICO for this. This, is, this basically tokenizes something that's inside of the Ethereum protocol itself, which is gas rebates. And this is very interesting it allows you to buy gas when it is cheap on the blockchain so let's take a look right now at the the prices if you're familiar with doing ethereum transactions you know that these gas prices affect you right now they are moderately high at 23 over the past week they've been in the 30s or 40s so it's been about twice as expensive to perform any given transaction from a token transfer to anything else on the ethereum blockchain as of late but right now it's only 23. Now, a few months ago, it, it was between one and 10. So back then it was much, much cheaper. So it all depends on what apps are getting adoption and, and how active people are on the Ethereum blockchain. That congestion causes higher prices. So you can see here we have the fast. If you want a transaction approved under two minutes, you need to pay 23 GUE. And if you need under five minutes, it's going to be about 18, 17. These are estimates, of course, and this is from fgasstation.info, which is one of the most reliable sources for getting your estimates about how much gas you should be paying for any given transaction. So let's take a look over here. We have, in previous videos, talked about orfeed.org slash angle, which allows you to do triangular trades between different exchanges. And here's a, a really sad story. And this is typical. So someone went from DAI to Ether back to DAI, and they paid a transaction fee of $7 uh, for $5 transaction. Now, of course, they were probably testing to see if it works. And so, you know, in the future, if they see some arbitrage or some other kind of opportunity, they might do $5,000, $6,000. But because it's on the Ethereum blockchain, people can copy your trades. So someone might come in and try to copy that trade and beat them to it. Setting a high gas price allows you to jump to the front of the line when you're executing a trade, but you definitely want to save on gas. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to jump to the head of the line and not spend as much money as your counterparty? Well, gas tokens allow you to do this. So let's talk about a little bit about how that works. So the first thing is you don't need an exchange to purchase gas token. Now, of course, you can 
go on to Uniswap and you can actually buy gas token. So there's two types of gas token. There's GST1 and GST2. In this video, we're going to talk about GST2 because if you're doing the kind of things that I'm talking about in this video, then GST2 is probably going to fit your needs a little better. You can dig into the differences. It's on the gastoken.io website, uh, a great article about how the, the two differ. But as you can see here, I can go in, purchase gas. Now, what is this gas? Let's talk about it from a practical standpoint. If you go to our GitHub on the Orfeed project, you'll see that we've added a new folder to the examples folder called extra. So you can go in there today. We're going to be looking at the efficient gas proxy dot soul contract. I'll leave a link of that in the description. So you'll need to deploy it yourself. So usually in co contracts, I'll put the main aid address so that you don't have to deploy it. You can do whatever you want. But for this contract, you definitely want to deploy it on your own because who deploys it is actually very important because you're going to be using this contract to interface with the blockchain and using a mechanism called delegate call. So essentially what this contract does is it works as a pass through whereby it will represent you. You send a transaction from your MetaMask and you actually call this contract. But before you do that, you set a contract that you want it to relay the information to. And at the very end, it takes any gas token that is available in the contract and it does a thing called free up to. And what this does is it frees up the space that or the slots that your gas token represents and the rebate is then applied to your transaction saving you money. Now we talked about the fact that you don't have to go on to an exchange to get gas token but you can and usually the people who sell gas token would have got it at a really cheap price. You can also mint gas token. So when gas token goes, when, when you see that fast transactions for gas are, let's say, five or two or one even, these days that wouldn't last very long. It would be an anomaly. But you would want to get there and mint as much gas token as you possibly could. And the reason for this, now when the price goes up to 23 40 50 you bought your gas at one so you can get your transactions in much cheaper now when you perform a trade or you something like that all of the funds will be sent to your contract and that's why you have a function that only owner which is the person who deploys the contract can call you have withdraw owner f which will actually takes all the f that's currently in the contract and then transfers it back to you and then you also have a withdraw owner tokens, which only the owner can call, which in which you send over which token, so DAI, SI, WETH, OMG. And then it'll get the full balance that this contract has of that token and then transfer all those back over to you. So one way of interfacing with your proxy smart contract and setting up this whole thing is to use myetherwallet.com. You can then click on access my wallet. I usually click on this one to just go through MetaMask and you'll click access wallet. From there, you'll click on contract and interact with the contract. So now let's talk about how this is done. So the end result will be that you'll take your proxy contract address. You'll put it in here. You'll load in the API of the contract that you want to call and you'll have access to its functionality. So, and then you will say, you know, transfer or maybe you want to do an approval like we did in the previous transactions that we showed. And then you'll click right. But now let's go back. How do you actually interface? The first thing you'll need to do is you'll paste in your contract's address. So I've deployed the contract and it's here. I'll then paste in the ABI for my contract. I'll get that. And then I'll paste it here. I'll click continue. And then I'll click set logic address. 
and then I'll set it to a token or an exchange or whatever I want to interface with. Once I set that address for the contract, for example, this is OMG token. So let's say I wanted to use my proxy to interface with this smart contract. I would copy its ABI and then I would paste it in here. Once I set set logic contract to that address and then I'll click continue and then I can use its functionality, for example, the approve function and I could set a variety of variables and then write to that contract. Now, because of the nature of delegate calls, this won't always work for everything that you want to do. So, in order to save money on transactions, I recommend instead of using the proxy smart contract, which is mostly for non-coders, and there are many new UIs that might arrive that will allow non-coders to go and use a proxy contract that then takes care of gas token transactions to create the rebate and save on gas. But for now, if you're coding the contract, let's look at one of our earlier contracts from one of our first tutorials that does a simple Kyber swap. So let's say you have a function like this that is going to swap out tokens. At the end of it, you'll want to do take the code from efficient gas proxy, specifically the interface, You'll want to paste that in for the gas token, and then you'll want to specify the gas token, possibly in the constructor or at the beginning of the contract. Now that you have that instantiated, you'll then, at the end of whatever you're doing, what you'll then want to do is at the end, you'll copy this bit of code and you'll paste it where you want to do the swap. So if I want to do Kyber to Uni ARB swap, at the very end, before I return true, I'll check if I have gas token in this smart contract, and then if I do, I'll have it free up the gas, give me the rebate, and then my transaction is cheaper. And you can put this essentially at the end of any of the functions that you would like. So I'll leave this example smart contract code in the description and so this way it can be used without the proxy smart contract and you can free up the gas get the rebate and save on your transaction additionally it's recommended to set up a bot you can use information that you might have learned from our previous tutorials on how to set up your node.js bot but you'd want to listen in for gas prices from the api potentially here and when the gas got to a certain level that you like, you would then go about interfacing with the gas token contract, accumulate that gas, or if it's cheap on Uniswap, buy it there. From there, you will deploy it in your smart contract. From there, you'll deploy it in your smart contract like so once you've instantiated your gas token object and imported the gas token interface and then receive a more efficient transaction. For more information on gas token, you can visit gastoken.io and view the full docs to understand how it works. Thanks for watching and I hope this video was useful.